Hello, it's Fitplay TV. I'm Albina, and here is James. You know, uh, you know him as Banks, uh, and we are here to talk about uh, his personality and uh, a lot of questions. Okay. <laughs> First of all, how's your mood for today? Yeah, good. It was um, obviously a long day yesterday. On the first day, it's what's expected on the opening days, more games. Um, but we came into today, we had some good matchups, and it was a, a positive start to it all. We had a, a really explosive game, which looked like it was going to be 2 0, and mm -hmm. then it went to all the three maps and started to be competitive, and that's what we like the most when it comes to Counter Strike. You told me off the record that you are a Kiev resident. Right yes, now. yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us about um, how it happened. Um, so I was working here for another company doing um, different games, I was commentating, and I basically found that I ended up being here for more than I would be anywhere else in the world. So I made the decision, I was like, okay, may as well move here. And then I managed to find my girlfriend here and now it just made sense. So, so she's local? Yes, yes, she's, she's Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Yes, yes, yeah. she's pure oh. Ukrainian. <laughs> um, what Ukrainian words do you know? Oh, um, I can do like the whole Spasiba, Dasvidanya, but because I, I travel for my job all the time, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get a teacher that will do like, um, like on an app mm -hmm. because I d I'm not good at learning like in schools or like like books and stuff like that. I need to learn from a person. Mm -hmm. But when you travel so much like we do, to be in one place and have like, oh, go to school on this day to learn, doesn't work for me. So I'm trying to find a teacher that will like work on Skype or something like that and learn yeah, properly. But luckily, my girlfriend teaches me a little bit. But I'm pretty terrible. <laughs> and what about your son? So my son, he's really lucky at the moment because obviously he lives here. He's going to a school that teaches English, has a lot of. Um, international students there as well. He's only three, but they do French, Russian, and um, French, uh, in English as well. So mm -hmm. he's learning across the board, all of it. And being young, they pick it up a lot faster. So mm -hmm. he's in a good mix at the moment. <laughs> How was your adaptation here? Uh, like um, local people, uh, do you understand something what they say? Um, in terms of like living here, it's obviously I've always lived in different countries, so I'm originally I'm from the United Kingdom, but at one point I lived in Korea for a little bit, I lived oh. in Germany and Berlin for a while, um, and then we travel obviously for events non-stop, so you just get used to kind of the flow of moving around, but living here permanently, actually it's been quite easy because where I live, the area I live has got a lot of other international people, so not just no notoriously saying one language being spoken. Um, but everyone's really friendly anyway, and I have a lot of help, not just from my girlfriend, but from like people I know from esports that also are Ukrainian, and it's made life a lot easier to kind of find my way around it all. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, did you try any local food? Oh yeah, my girlfriend's mum cooks a lot of food for us. I'm, I know, I have, I've, had, I've had the borscht one, I've had another one which is like different cabbage leaves with like loads of meat and stuff and things in it, and then Golubci? That's it, yeah. See, I can't say that. I'm terrible at this. But yeah, I, I, I enjoy the food. So for me, I'm really into like fitness and healthy eating. So that kind of stuff works perfectly. Just like veg, meats and that and so rice. So you are strict in your diet? or? Yes, really strict yeah. in my diet. Yeah, I try to be. Um, about a year ago, um, I, put a, I put a picture up because my son was getting older. Um, and I was a lot bigger. I was a lot overweight. So in my past, alongside esports, I used to be a kickboxing coach. I fought in MMA as well. I competed for belts and titles. Um, and then as my son was born, he was like obviously my priority, but I just did work. I stopped going to the gym. I didn't train. And I mean, I was, I was like 120 kg and now I'm 101. Um, I did that in a year, but I'm kind of running a program at the moment to, I, I've got pro players and talent as well, other talent who I make training plans for and help them on their diet, what they should eat, because fitness is so important, especially when you're traveling, working long hours. And also for the gamers that are coming up, the young gamers, we are being seen, they are there, they may be fans of us. We should inspire them to do yeah. more than just sit and play games. Because gaming is one thing, but like look at Astralis, they're the best counter team in mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. And all of them go to the gym. All of them have a plan and a, and a a dietitian and, and all these other things around it and some teams they just don't think it's worth it mm -hmm. but well there's a reason they're the best team in the world and that's also part of it yeah. uh, is it easy for you to keep your diet and uh, your training process during the travel it's it's really hard so every flight i get on i pay more money 
for uh, either an extra suitcase or more weight in the suitcase. With the equipment? Yes. Uh, yeah, because not just gym training equipment, because mm. I'm lucky that we generally go to hotels that have a gym. But also, you don't have to have a gym just to work out. You can do body weight exercises. The main thing is diet. Mm. So what I do is I pack all my supplements, which is like food that's acceptable for me to eat. So maybe a, a ready-made protein shake, mm -hmm. um, meal replacement shakes, there's a company called Runtime and I work with them on, they give like a, a food supplement things, mm -hmm. protein bars, stuff like that. Um, nuts I travel with as well because you want nuts that are unsalted, maybe like almonds or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to find a solution if there's ever bad food. Luckily though, here where we are, we have, I've had chicken, I've had rice, I've had pasta. So it's like all food that I'm happy with and I can eat. So I can stay away from that. Some events, they just give you sandwiches and I'm just like, can't eat sandwiches every day, that's not good. So you mm, don't like cheat meals? No, no. I, I, like, for me, I'm really strict. You don't have to be as strict, but um, I feel like you can have a one or two bad meals, fine. Like, I can have a pizza every now and again, sure. Um, and it's nice, it tastes good. I'm not against the food that's like unhealthy. Which pizza do you prefer? Oh, pizza for me? Um, I like spice, so I like a Diablo or something like that. So lots of jalapenos and like no, spicy yeah. beef and salami <laughs> and that kind of stuff. Um, and spicy food as well. So if you're having unhealthy food and you have spice, well, because it heats you up, it's actually a good way of extra fat burning to your body. Yeah, so yeah. you can use that to your advantage in a, in a small degree. It's I'm not saying you, can just eat, you can't just eat pizzas, that's for sure. But <laughs> you can have um, a bit of freedom with your eating but the main thing is that it's eating enough of the right food for your body because what people do is they always feel oh well you know what I'll just eat less that's the worst thing because your body goes into like a fat storing mode because it's trying to hold on to everything so what you really need to do is eat little and often or more and often depending on what you're going for like for me now I've lost more weight and now I want to build more muscle again and get stronger but if you just want to live healthy and lose weight you can pretty much just do that from eating the correct foods yeah. <laughs> okay. A masterclass on foods and, and diets. <laughs> uh, that was uh, really good advice is for, uh, for the fans, the viewers. Hopefully that's the plan, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, let's switch to your experience. Okay. Uh, you have a great experience um, in commenting mm. um, with um, almost 20 years. Yes. Yeah, so I've, I've played Counter-Strike since 2003. Um, I was a professional player from 2003 to 7 in the UK, um, playing Counter-Strike 1.6. But in the UK, Counter-Strike is, uh, they're not the best. We're not that great. We spent a lot of time getting destroyed by other good teams. But I've, I've been very fortunate to play against people like Zonic, who's the coach of Astralis. I've played against, um, been friends with people like Spawn, who's a legend in the 1.6 scene. Heaton, who founded Nip Gaming alongside Potty. Um, there's a lot of people that I've met along the way through being a player, which has allowed me to do this. Mm -hmm. But I first got into like commentary when I think it was when CSGO was released, because mm -hmm. CSGO came out a new game. I was definitely 100% not playing. I wanted to be retired. I, I was not going to play at top level. And I thought, how do I stay involved in something that I love? And luckily, before that, I used to work for a company as a marketing. They were a gaming company, but I did marketing for them. And I worked alongside Spawn and Heaton, and they were able to help me connect with a lot of people. And I guess because I am good at talking, or maybe talk too much, that I was able to meet enough people to keep me involved. And the one thing I've always done is I just want to do what I enjoy. So like, if I don't like something, it's all about the passion for me. So. My roles have changed. I've done interviewing, I've done hosting, um, I've done more hosting now in the last year than I have my commentary. And that's purely because I'm enjoying it more. Um, and that's my choice of where I want to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, is there any significant difference between uh, being a host mm -hmm. or being uh, a commentator behind the scenes? Um, I think commentating is really great and it's a lot of fun and you get the, the fast-paced action of it but there's less of a responsibility on you. Yes, you're guiding the viewers through the game and honestly the most views are on the game when it's being commentated, not on the desk for example. Some people will just watch the game but the desk and when I'm hosting I have to keep control of the conversation. I have to make sure when a video is ready I'm stopping my guys talking and allowing that video to play and it's really 
kind of bringing the show together. And I think that's the hardest part of it as well, because commentating, you commentate what's in front of you, you know the game, you see what's in front of you, and you're not on camera as much. Mm -hmm. Now, you're on camera, you're front facing, you've got to be entertaining as well. You can't just get away with just talking about the game. So there's a different dynamic to it. And I would say on paper, the hosting part is harder, but it's less time actually talking, unless you have to fill for a long time. So when there's delays and you're stuck and you have to talk for a long time, you gotta keep finding information, keep finding things to talk about. Um, but I'd say like to answer your question is, the big difference is just the, the way you're taking responsibility, I think. Mm -hmm. And there's more responsibility on the host because even the host is throwing to the commentators and then taking it back from them. So you're kind of the, the main piece of the puzzle that helps the whole thing run. I want to ask you about uh, cases, um, maybe fun moments or embarrassing moments in your career. Um, okay, so some embarrassing moments. I was doing the recent CSGO major, obviously the majors are the biggest event in it. And um, I had some information given to me in my ear from the producer and they told me to go and pick up my microphone and stuff and I was doing interactions with the crowd. And this is a sold out arena, like thousands and thousands of fans. And I went to go pick up my stuff. Someone else had already taken my stuff thinking they were going to bring it to me. So the guy gave me the wrong information. The game had ended and I needed to be in position. So I had to run from one side of the arena to the other. All the fans have their video cameras on their phones. And there's me, there's, they, they're using real fire. And I jump over the fire. Because I don't Whoa. know, I was just, I just was like, I need to do my job. You so I hurt? sprinted. No? Uh, I luckily avoided any damage. Yeah, I was just in time. But you just see me jump over the fire, start sprinting. Then I have to go from the bottom of the arena up to the third floor. The lift was not taken, so I ran up there. I get there, I managed to get, I'm literally, I'm sweating because the fire had got me. I'm, and the fans are really nice. They're like inviting me in because they want to be on camera. They want to have fun. They're cheering. And it was all these Danish fans and they'd been drinking all day. Mm -hmm. So they were quite intoxicated from drinking beer all day. Um, the Glaive's brother, who's the in-game leader of Astralis, he was there cheering away, screaming and shouting. Some of them had their tops off. It was a good fun segment. But I remember afterwards when the segment ended, I was like, I was kind of angry at the person who told me the wrong information. Like mm -hmm. I'm shouting at him mm -hmm. because it's like, how have you allowed that to happen? But then afterwards I was like, just stood outside for ages and I couldn't even go down to where the, um, back where I was supposed to go. So I was then stuck in the arena with all the fans and they were wanting autographs and pictures. And I'm like trying to catch my breath. I'm, I'm dripping wet. I'm like, <sighs> and, the, and everyone was like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I've just ran around this entire arena and all you guys want is pictures, which is fine. I'm fine with that, but I'm dying. Like, just give me, give me two minutes to kind of calm down. Not in the right shape, right? Yeah, now. definitely, definitely, definitely was not ready for that. Um, but they, these issues happen. And I think the, the biggest flaw in a lot of people that do our job is when these issues happen, they just go, well, I'm not doing it. Like for me, it's not about, oh, well, someone else messed up. It's about finding the solution to the problem. And also it's our job to make the show as good as possible, not just for the people who are hiring us, but for the fans. And it was important for that fan moment to be captured. So I did my best to, to, to make so it happen. you are really a really responsible person. I try to be. I can't say I'm fully responsible. Like I've done a lot of stupid stuff, but you learn from the stupid stuff. Like when I was younger, I was definitely, um, I spoke about this on a video before where I had maybe more of an ego than what I should have had in terms of, because I was an ex-pro player many years ago, and because I felt like, oh, well, I have information knowledge, well, why am I not being hired? And I had an ego of like, well, I'm better than this person, I'm better than that person. But I was a lot younger then, and what I did learn from it was, actually, you can be really smart at actually knowing the game, but there's so much more in commentary and hosting and interviewing where you have to be an entertainer as well. You have to be good at the actual on-screen side of things. So it was a big learning curve for me that kind of helped me mature as well. You had a recent interview with Mitch. A yes, really controversial yes. interview. Could you tell us? Um, interesting moment with Mitch on the desk. So Mitch is really great. Like He's very new to this. He's young. He's only 21. But he will do anything that's thrown at him. And I really like his, his kind of ambition to do better. And he knows that he's not perfect. He knows that he's new and learning, but he will try anything. He has the confidence to do it. So he's doing a desk and it was me, him, and a guy called War Clown. Me and War Clown have been doing this for very long. We both have kids, we're both old, and there's young Mitch in the desk. So we're at Copenhagen Games and um, we get to the end desk segment and we're all like, it was a lot of fun and laughing 
and Copenhagen Games is a very relaxed event. It's like an old event from back when I was a player, before the cameras, before the streams, so you didn't have to be professional as such. So we're talking, and Mitch was like making jokes. He's like, oh, you'd probably kiss me or something. And I'm like, don't tempt me, because if I'm given a bet, I will do it. I have no shame. I'm very confident. I have a, I have a, a son. I have my beautiful girlfriend. I am definitely interested in women, but I don't have a problem with if I need to do this and mess him up. So we're all stood in the line, and then the very next moment, the show's about to end, we're about to close it, and I just grab him and kiss his cheek, and he's, his face is like, like completely lost. He was shocked. Yeah, and then the guy who's also on the desk with us just leaves the desk. He's like, what do I do? And just, just exits and runs away, and it was so <laughs> funny. And then afterwards, we're all like, we'll go to have some drinks after the event and stuff, and everyone's like, I can't believe you did that. And I was like, give me a challenge, I'll do it. I don't care. For me, the entertainment is such a big part because we have the games, we have fun, but... We, we can't just hardcore analysis because there are some people who want to be entertained. It's a show, so we have to add some other elements to it. Like there was a moment today where um, the commentators left their mics on. So in our ears, all we could hear was the mics. Mm -hmm. And so I just said, well, clearly our commentators don't know how to be professional and they can't turn their microphones off. And Mitch just walks over and turns their mics off. He's like, I'll show you guys how to do it. <laughs> And it's just having little moments like that because we know each other that the broadcast laugh, we laugh, and we get to have some fun with it. Your recent post on Instagram mm. with uh, some interesting thoughts about uh, Forge of Masters. Uh, do you prefer show tournaments or some serious events? So for me, it depends on the level of the event. The CSGO majors should always be serious. We've So I had a benefit of doing interviews, but also creating content for the CSGO major recently. And in the content I was making, I got to have fun. We did one with a player, because I have a, a background in kickboxing, he'd also done Taekwondo, so we did some filming in the gym. Mm. We could still have fun and do good interview content as well, and serious content, but for the majors, when it's the games, when it's the desk, that should be 100% serious. Yes, some funny bits may be at players that don't play too well or have a joke and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but it's more they are expected to be on a, a very professional top tier level. With something like this is, you guys are giving us the freedom to obviously dress up and have some other parts. Do you to like it. the suit? I really, yeah, I really like it. I'm, I'm hoping we get to keep it. It's a good fit. It's nice. I really like it. Um, but no, we've never had this before. We just make our own wardrobes. We choose mm -hmm. it. So the fact that we have a theme, we get to dress up a little bit. It gives us a bit of a, a freedom to have fun with it as well, and gives us a different. Like I definitely feel more. I guess more dressed up and more ready for mm. being embracing the theme, like having the trains on the stage and stuff. And like when we had train come in onto the games, I was sat there like doing choo choo and stuff <laughs> like that. Like there, there needs to be a balance. There's an event called Summit that happens in America, and that is not even really commentary or desk. It's just a a sofa. Mm -hmm. People just sit on the sofa, talk about the games, they bring the players in, sometimes they have the talent in, everyone's dressed down, it's a really relaxed environment. You need to have a balance because there's different type of viewers. Not every event can just be game, desk, interview, game, desk, it, it becomes too repetitive. So having themes, having something different brings a new element. And even the videos you guys play on the adverts, like it's it's different it's funny it's it's trying to create something it's that's to hear but it, but for us we're seeing this stuff the whole time honestly you'll hear us um in like the back rooms and stuff we'll see some of these sponsors new sponsors will come in and it's like they clearly just think we're 12 year old kids playing games because their adverts are trash like they don't understand how to mm -hmm. market towards us mm -hmm. because they're not talking to us they're these idiots in suits working nine to five jobs thinking I know everything and it's like you may have a degree but you don't know our industry and you don't know us where you guys at least from what we've seen this is my first event ever working for you guys you have an understanding of what the gaming and esports scene is and a lot of these bigger companies maybe struggle with that at times it's it's nice to hear this kind of, a, a <laughs> it's kind of work. only the truth there's there's many there's many companies that have literally come to us and they're like we'll pay you this money promote this product and I'm like but your product is trash and you're just trying to sell the product based on thinking gamers don't know. These kids, like my little brother, when he started getting into gaming, he's 10 years younger than me, so he's 18 now, but at the time when I was first, like I was still playing, he was really young, but at six, seven years old, he knew what he wanted in a mouse. He knew that the flashy colors and all that stuff means nothing. He wants something that performs to do the job of winning the games. And there's still companies out there that believe, let's have all flashing colors, and I'm like, but is your product actually good? Does that mouse, give me any benefit does it have a speed that i'm happy with is it got customizable software inside it that will benefit our games because 
if you're trying to be a professional athlete or you want to win your games and play on a serious level, the only thing I care about is even if you can make my, my performance 1% better, then it's worth buying your product. If not, the lights and everything else that comes with it doesn't actually help me. It may look pretty, and some people like that. I'm sure there's a market for it, but at least within esports on the pro level, no one cares about that stuff. You're a really honest person. Oh yeah, I don't care. I've got no, I've got nothing to hide. I'm I'm nearly 30. I've done this stuff for a long time, and I'm I'm not interested in selling lies anymore. It's just you either like it or you don't, and and that's the way it is. Um, how you imagine your ordinary viewer? Like an audience. Okay. Um, I think there's different audiences because it depends on the age group you have. Um, I also commentate a bit of Fortnite as well, and that's a lot younger audience. I get to have a lot of fun with it, but I have to tone down maybe the words I use. I can't use longer words or bigger words mm -hmm. maybe um, because some of them are probably still in school learning that side of things. With Counter-Strike, we have a big age range. I think the people who watch the desk and the, the analysts are a bit more of the hardcore side of things. The people that just watch the games are the, probably the fans of the players and the teams themselves. I say we have anything from really young gamers who are maybe 9, 10, even younger, and they are seeing these pros. They want to be there. They want to be on the big stages, which is why we now see professional players who are starting at 16, 17 being mm -hmm. signed. Mm -hmm. And they are not scared of the stages because they've seen it. They've watched it. They've probably been to events. There's Plopsky who plays for Ninjas in mm -hmm. Pajamas. Only two or three years ago, he was watching Nip as a fan at an event and now he plays for the team. That's the crazy Dreams stories of the fan. Yeah, exactly. There, there's, and this is what these kids are aspiring to be. They want to be living this life and traveling. And, and that's where I see a lot of like the young, crazy viewers that I love seeing. Obviously, you get Twitch chat and stuff where you get the trolls and we get people that message us on Twitter and send us abuse because we didn't think their team would win. Mm. Those people, I get it because they're younger, mm -hmm. but also they're not educated. They think trolling and, and abusing people is cool. I've had people like say horrible things about my son and stuff when I've posted oh. pictures. And I'm just like, well, screw you then. Like, <laughs> If you're going to be like that, you're clearly an idiot in the first place. But as they get older, like I said, when I was younger, I was a bit of an idiot. You you learn you grow and i think that's where it's important for us who are talent and even the pro players especially the pro players that are being looked at should be responsible in their actions and try and show and teach these guys to be better now you're not going to change everyone some people are sadly just horrible mean people but there are good people in the world that you can have and the people we meet at events the fans that we sign autographs for or take pictures to me they're the best people because they sometimes come up to us and they're like, I'm sorry, but do you mind? Or like they, not starstruck, but they're more respectful with it and they appreciate it. And it's because they're making a lot of effort. Some of these people travel all around Europe or even to America and, and Asia just to see the events and just to meet players and get signing sessions and stuff. So the audience is very split, but I'd say at least 90% of it is, the, especially the Counter-Strike community, is very passionate, very good, and, and they, they want to see good Counter-Strike. There's just a small minority that maybe ruin that perspective for the, the bigger audience out there. Um, I would like to thank you for this interview. No problem. Uh, a lot of questions <laughs> were asked, asked and answered. And um, uh, maybe a short advice for the viewers, for the fans. Um, advice on what? what to, to put them where? <laughs> like you're um, not shut out, but your speech for the viewer okay um, advice. I guess for all the viewers out there for if you're trying to be a pro player if you're trying to be an aspiring pro player you have to not give up you have to keep pushing forward you have to find your own way through sometimes you might not play on the team that's in your nationality in your country there's obviously mixed teams there's international teams that come into it if you're looking to maybe do the jobs that we do then look at what we do see how you think it could be done better practice, download demos, commentate and put yourself out there. It's scary, but it's worth doing. And if you're just a viewer and someone who just wants to watch and enjoy, then keep on enjoying, but be a good person while doing it. Your team may not win every game. The players may lose games at times. The main thing is, is that you support them through the highs and the lows and also just enjoy great Counter-Strike. If your team doesn't win, then support the next team that you want to do alongside it. But you don't need to talk badly against those teams as well. And just most importantly, have fun, be yourself and enjoy it all. Thank you so much for no the problem. Thank you. That's all I guess. Awesome.